Welcome to part two of the day table or calendar table series. My name is Gosh Pekamashik and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a calendar table with DAX. So we're going to create one in Power Pivot. That's the Excel side of things. And then we're going to create one in Power BI, right? So the similar engine to Power Pivot. And in both cases, we're going to use the same data set that you saw in the first video. So in the first video, it was an introduction to what is a calendar table or a date table and how to create one in Excel. And if you haven't seen that video, it's somewhere up there. And after you see how you create a calendar table in Power Pivot, you may want to watch that video again because you're probably going to create your tables, your calendar tables or your date tables in Excel. Um, so let's start with part one. So part one is how to create it in Power Pivot. So the same three tables, right? As we've seen in the first video, the sales table, the forecast table, and the salesperson table. And whereas we didn't have issues in the first video where we created a calendar table in Excel, right now we're gonna have serious issues. So the two columns that are gonna be problematic are this, so a time column, and then this column, simply because in our data set, we don't really want to slice and dice data in 1940, right? All we need are the dates from our sales table and our forecast table, right? And so let's see where the issues arise. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put all these three tables into Power Pivot. So simply you go into the table and you say, Power pivot and add to data model. So that is our first table inserted. Let's go back to Excel. Oh, it's still running. Okay, back to Excel. Second table, add to data model. Let's wait for that one to load. And it did. And now we go back to Excel and the third table, add to data model. Okay. So the three tables are now loaded. You can see them down here. So we got our sales table, our forecast table, and the salesperson table. So these are all part of the data model now. They're in Power Pivot. Now I'm not going to do any relationships between the tables. Uh, we don't need to at this point. And there would be no difference in the way that this automation works, right? So how to create a date table for this model in Power Pivot. This is gonna be very anticlimactic because what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do this. We're gonna say, okay, design, date table, new, and that's it. And the rest of it will be taken care of by the uh, by Power Pivot engine. But what you're gonna notice is this is far from what we would need, right? Because what it's gonna create is the worst calendar ever because it will be a calendar going back to year 1899. Now, the reason it's doing that is because of that time column, right? So let's, let's see how we could fix this. So I'm just gonna delete this calendar that it did because it's not any good. And I'm gonna delete it. Then I'm gonna go back to Excel. So I'm just gonna wait for this to register, go back to Excel, and I'm going to make this table smaller for that one column, right? So I'm just going to make the table now goes from here to here. And I'm going to go back to Power Pivot now. And in Power Pivot, I'm going to take the sales table and I'm going to refresh it because it changed. So I'm going to refresh it. And now you're going to see that this column is no longer present in our table, right? So now the sales table only has three columns, date, total sales, and best salesperson, right? So now that we have no time columns in our data set, let's see what the automation will do now. So if I go design, date table, new, let it go through its paces. And at this point, we're gonna get a slightly better calendar 
still not what we're looking for. This one will go up to 1940. Why will it go to 1940? Well, because of the salesperson table. Because the salesperson table has date of birth for each and every one of the anonymous four people in the salesperson table. So John, Paul, George, Ringo, and John and Ringo were both born in 1940. So that's why our calendar now goes back to 1940. Again, not what we wanted. So if I wanted to fix even that, I would go, okay, let's delete this one. And then I would go back to Excel. And at this point, I would get rid of the, so I would make the table for the salesperson smaller. But then if I get rid of this column, I only have this and that doesn't even, you know, it doesn't even make sense for it to be there. So let's just delete the whole dimension then if, you know, if it's only going to have D1 column. And now let's look at what we have. So if I now only having the two tables left and only the dates that are actually the ones that I need. If I now go design, date table, new, I am gonna get the date table that I kind of need. But as you can see, this command is so, I'm not gonna say buggy because it works as intended. Well, not always as you can see, um, but still it works as intended and you can see that we still got our dates from 2017 down to 2022. So that works now. The problem is we had to get rid of the time columns. What if I needed those? We had to get rid of an entire table because it had dates that we didn't want. So as far as this is sort of bulletproof because it's just a button, it doesn't, it doesn't allow you any interaction or anything that you could set up. Uh, and that is sometimes great, right? You just click it, it works. Um, this is not, I'm not even going to say the best method. It's not even a good method to create a calendar table because you have no control over what's going to come out. So at this point, it did kind of create a calendar table. In the end, that was okay. But as you saw, without me actually having then all the data that I need, right? So this definitely not a good or a perfect way to do things. And again, remember, you could still do this in Excel and then just import it to Power Pivot, um, which was in the first video. Okay, now part two of this is gonna, part two of part two will be, now let's create a calendar in Power BI. And many people think it's the same engine, right? It's the Power Pivot in Power BI. And you're gonna see it's not the same engine. And you're gonna see there are some commands and some things that you can do in Power BI that make it a bit more efficient here. So if I go to, into Power BI now like this, I already have the sales table. I have the forecast table and I do have the salesperson table. You can see all of them here. Now, you can see that I do have the time right here, right? Um, I could format it differently. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. Um, and then I have the forecast table, which is the same as it was in Power Pivot. And then I have the salesperson table, which has the date, right? So how do I create a calendar table here? Well, in a sense or in a way, this is actually worse than in Power Pivot because you have no button create a calendar table. There is no button to do that, but you can do this. You can say, okay, I want a new table. So create me a new table in my data set. Okay, and the way you would do this, you would call the table calendar. And then funny enough, the function you would use is also called the calendar. And we're gonna go January 1st, 2017. 
all the way to December 31st, 2022. Right, this will be the basis of our calendar. And as you can see, now we get exactly what we want. And at this point, we could start by saying new column. And we would get year and go year of calendar date. And then you would have the month. And then let's just do the month name. So you will see the function that we're using. And then we're just going to show you how the end result would look. So I'm going to do month name and that equals the format function which is the equivalent of a text function in Excel. The value is in calendar date so take the date and format it as MMMM equally as you would format a cell in Excel to have the month name. Now if I wanted just the first three this is what I would use but either way, this is how you do it. So, and of course we would need the quarter and all that. And in the end, what we would do is we would, I'm going to remove both month name and year. And I'm just going to change the original, uh, create a table uh, function. So, what I'm going to do is I have the original function here, right? Is this. And I'm going to change it into, let me just find the right one. I'm going to change it into this. So let me just paste that back for you. You like this. So instead of this, it will now be this. So I took the same calendar from January 1st, 2017 to December 31st, 2022. That stays the same, but then I just created the add columns function and just added year, month, number, month, quarter, year, month, weekday, number, weekday, week, number, and let that rip. And there it is, right? So this is how you could create a calendar in DAX, kind of superseding the automation calendar auto in this case that still works wrong because of the time uh, column and because of the uh, date of birth within the salesperson table right so this is how you would do it and for our next party trick or actually the next video which will be part three of the series I'm going to show you how to create a calendar in Power Query, so with the M language, and you're going to see that that has way more versatility to it, and it's way better than um, this, where you can see you could still do it, but it's hard-coded, right? It's not dynamic. So as we're going to do a how to create a date table in Power Query video, you're going to see that you can actually do it far better over there. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.